Hi guys, y'all ready for this? So basically today, um, we're not gonna delve in and do a full head application again, but I wanted to just focus on the fringe on her. Can everybody see her well enough? Is she close enough? Maybe we'll scoot her a bit closer for you. Um, we're just gonna create a bit of a shine line in this shag. I'm looking at her and I think that adding that little pop of color is going to be awesome. Um, now, when I first started with her, she was this very coppery um, color. So I went ahead and pre-toned her with Celeb Luxury um, Silver Shampoo and then the Gem Lights Conditioner, and it gave her this beautiful beige. So we're gonna work off of this. Um, whenever I'm working on a mannequin or any kind of extension hair, I'm always going to pre-work pre that hair. I'm gonna go in with a nice clarifying shampoo to make sure that I can get any coating off that hair um, so that it's ready to go for a vivid application. So we did a poll at my last class and everybody decided that they wanted to see red, purple, and blue. So I mostly listened to you guys, but I switched it up just a little bit. Oops. So first I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna kind of separate out the section that I'll be working in. Get any of these long hairs out of the way because I am going to be creating a shine line, so we want to make sure it's super clean. You don't want any of this long stuff in there. Cool. Now, I went ahead and I mixed up my colors already because I feel like that in itself is a whole other process that usually takes me a little while. Um, I am not very much somebody who will take color and just plop it right out of the bottle, into the bowl, and then onto my client's hair. I have to formulate it somehow. I have to make it my own. And so that's what I did. Um, so I listened with the blue and the violet, but I've changed the red for this coral color, this hot coral that I'm so obsessed with right now and I'm just in the mood to work with it. So I switched the red for this. Um, had I done the red, I would have probably done a color melt that went from red into the blue because I know that by mixing red and blue, it's going to create a violet color. So I would only have to use um, the red and the blue colors and just kind of blend them to create that. Um, we're gonna do something a little different. This is my little color swatch. Every time I'm doing a direct dye, you guys, I think it's super important to do a swatch. You wanna see what that color is gonna look like on white paper. Um, so that's, that's a major key. And you guys chose some pretty bold, deep concentrated colors. So I also went in first and I, I put in a few squirts of just regular color protect conditioner. And then I went in and I added my violet after so that I could really control the tones that I was creating. Um, I also did the same thing with my blue um, for the same exact reason. So without further ado, let's get started. I am going to come in and create vertical sections. So, so that I know exactly where I'm applying the color and why. So we'll come in, create a nice, I'm gonna block you for a second, make sure I'm, okay, this looks good. Now, I will be using mesh sheets today because I am a sustainable stylist and this means a lot to me to not waste a million foils with every single application. Today I took my regular mesh sheet and I actually cut it into smaller sections so that it's more controlled for me while I'm working today. And this is something that I do all the time when I'm creating different color placements and doing um, you know, funky rainbows just in a solid area. I'll make sure that I'm working with um, a mesh sheet that is a size that's appropriate for what I'm actually doing. So once I get my section figured out, now I'm gonna go in and I want this to kind of melt today. So I'm gonna start with conditioner at the top because I want this to go from her natural blonde and then just kind of melt into 
these colors. Obviously, if this was a client, I would not be applying conditioner straight to her head like this, but this is what's easy right now, and I will show you what I do with a client. So, I'm gonna take my section. See, also, we got some good saturation. I'm gonna come in and pull my section right down. Once I've got my mesh sheet in place, I'm gonna come in with this top color. It doesn't always have to be clear. Maybe you're doing a color melt or a root smudge with the same application, and you can still do the same thing, but I love using my root smudge at the top to really secure my section. Now I'm gonna come in. It's very important to have a clean brush, so a hot tip. I always use, you know, you use your brush to mix up your colors, but then they get all covered and whatever. So I always make sure that I go in and clean it up a little bit so that I'm applying my product evenly and with control. Now I'm going to come right in and I'm going to apply that color. Now you'll notice when I'm doing a shine line, there's a lot more tapping and a lot less really stroking and brushing because then what happens is you'll end up picking up some of these shorter hairs and then you just kind of mix up the color. It gets a little messy and I'm way too OCD for that. So Jess, we can't... could you tell us what you mean by shine line, please? Oh yes, absolutely. Excuse me. So a shine line is going to be an application that is horizontal. So whenever you see the hair fall, it's always going to fall vertically. But every once in a while anymore, and with the big shot awards and stuff going on behind the chair, you see a lot of these applications where the color is actually applied horizontally like this, which creates kind of what a shine line would look like. If you were to take very shiny hair and cast a bright light over the top of it, it creates that shine line. And that's kind of what we're doing today. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. I'm a very visual person, so I'm very much like, I'll show you what a shine line is. So now I'm coming in with my second color. And again, we're just coming in and we're being very controlled. High saturation. See this little hair right here that has gotten some color? I'll grab these really quick and get that violet off the ends. You wanna keep a nice, clean section and application. Then once I get to the bottom here, I'm actually vertically, let me see if I can, I'm actually vertically placing my brush down a little bit. So once I get down here, I'm actually letting it get on these hairs a little because I know that the purple melting into the blue like this is going to look really pretty. I hope that gave you a solid um, visual over here, how I'm holding the brush and I'm okay with some of this violet. Just because violet and blue are such deep colors, it's going to look really pretty together. Now with the coral, I wanted to keep it a lot cleaner. So now I'm going to come in, I'm going to finish off my section. And now that I have all of the color where I want it, now I'm going to get a little more freaky with it. And we're going to come in and we're going to do some sideways motions to make sure that I'm really getting solid saturation. Um, another beautiful thing about these mesh sheets is the fact that they are clear. So you can really flip it up and see what's popping under there. I can see that I've got solid saturation. I can also see that the violet could probably use a little more. So when I get in there and I see that I need more saturation, now that I'm working with the middle section, I'm going to go in upwards strokes or motions to ensure that I'm really keeping that line clean, but also distributing the product. Now this first section is always the most tedious because you really want to solidify and lock in what your placement is going to be. So went in a couple times and now we are on to our next section. Now I'm actually going to take this section and I'm gonna drop it right down um, Drop it right down over the section. I saw somebody ask if I recommend a particular mask and, or mesh sheet, and I do. Um, I love the Pravana mesh sheets. 
I posted them in my story the other day after my class, and I will absolutely post them again today. All of you can go check me out on Instagram at Jessica Phillips underscore hair. I will be posting my after, so how this all turns out looking. And I'll also post all of my supplies that I use today. Um, I am a celeb luxury affiliate as well, so we can get you guys hooked up if you want to play with some of these colors while you're bored at home. Again, I'm going in with my clear at the very top for anybody who's just joining us. We're going in with clear because I want this to be a very seamless blend, going from this beigey blonde into just the rainbow in the bang. And again, I'm being very controlled with my product. I'm actually going to lift this up now so that I can really see what I'm doing. That's my flat iron. Perfect. So whatever it takes, whatever elevation you need in order to get in there and get your product on. And these are just color conditioners. Now with this section, uh, the second section, I'm actually going to skip my middle color and I'm going to go right in with the blue first, just to secure my section um, before I go in with the violet, because I want to make sure that we're keeping it really clean. And that's something that I'll do sometimes where I'll just skip that middle color just so that I can lock my section down. It's so important when you're doing funky little applications like this. You want to be in complete control of your sections, where the paint is going, what lines you are creating. Because I want to be very intentional with this line. I want harsh horizontal lines. Now I feel cool with that. I'm going to bring this closer. And again, this is just conditioner, so that's why I'm not wearing gloves. I also don't like to waste gloves if I don't have to. So to get closer, see, I just skipped the violet. And actually, whatever doesn't need to be on the mannequin stand. I'll come up close so that you guys can see. Now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna kinda go upwards with it. See how that's nice and clean? I hope you guys can see this because I'm just like holding it in the air. Yes, um, we're good. So see, an upward motion is totally fine. And I know that that purple isn't gonna do much to the blue because blue, is an overriding pigment. It, it basically, it eats most things up. Whenever I'm using a blue, you guys, I dilute it first. So I'm pulling down my last section. It's very easy. Bangs are usually just three little sections. And you can see that it, they're, they're pretty fine. It's pretty fine sections um, so that I'm able to get in there and be very deliberate with my application. Going in with regular color conditioner. I'm like obsessed with Amika right now, you guys. So I've been using Amika. So that answered a question I think we had, which is that, that non-pigmented layer that you just did, that's just a conditioner. Yeah, this is just a color protect conditioner. You know, all of these companies offer these diluters and these clear diluters, but I am an independent artist. I do all of my numbers. I do all of my product orders. So the cost of things, you want to be very conscious. If you're not working in a salon, then you know about this. Conditioner is always going to be less expensive than a clear dilute by, although Pravana has awesome ones. I mean, there's, there's a lot of great ones. I'm very much a Pravana girl, but... Um, you know, there's a lot of great ones, but I'm going to do what's cost effective for sure. And you're not concerned, you're not using mesh sheets in between each layer. Is there, is that, can you explain why? So the reason I'm not is only because this is such a, a very fine and soft and feathery fringe up here. It's very thin sections. I could go through, I actually, I did cut up three mesh sheets, assuming that I would, you know, keep them separate. But actually, sometimes it's a lot easier to be 
very, very consistent with your application if you just lay them down on top of each other. Now, if I were doing a full-blown shine line, like through the meat of her hair, I would definitely be laying down a mesh sheet in between each of my sections. But as you can see, like, this is very, it's very fine. You can still see the section underneath. And once I saturate it, it at least lets me know. I'm a very visual painter. So it lets me know that everything is going to start and end with the same line. Now I am going to get in here. Again, I'm giving myself a little elevation. And don't trip if you get a little bit that falls, because let me tell you, I've been doing shine lines for I don't even know how long, and that happens every time. It's never gonna be a totally perfect application, so just don't sweat it. It always comes out looking awesome. Cool. No. With this being a conditioner-based pigment, uh, how important is it not to overwork the color? Um, very important. And I'm going to actually take out just the conditioner part. And I'm going to say that with no matter what kind of direct pigment you're adding, whether it's a demi, a semi, a conditioner, um, something that you mix conditioner with demi or semi, I don't care what it is. You should always be very conscious about your application and spreading those molecules. Um, so I would definitely say you, you just want high saturation, especially when you're going in, you guys, and doing such a technical and tedious application like this. It would just be like the end of the world to have accidentally like dragged that product a little bit too much or to have diluted it a little bit too much in the beginning with conditioner. All of these variables are very important. I like to make sure um, that I'm getting heavy saturation and that I've got exactly the undertones that I want when I mix the color. Um, I hope that answered your question. Sometimes I will go off on a tangent. No, it did. I know when I first worded, started working with um, a semi that was conditioner based, I tend, I tend to overwork it uh, and it goes from being like a blue to looking more like a whitish blue and that's how I know I would overwork the, the pigment and the conditioner. Yeah. So this is a lot more, actually, I'm going to put her sideways now and just kind of show you, like, I'm totally done with the section, but I am just going to show you this. I'm going to put more products because again, I don't want to be overworking it. And this is much more of like a, do you see this? Like I'm tapping it on. This is like a tap and go. This is not your average work it. And when I'm doing that shimmying horizontal, we're not being too aggressive with that. That's really just to work that hair so that I know it's getting through any little holes or cracks. I was thinking the same thing. Okay, so now let's pull this little bad, bad Larry forward. Here we go. That's the bang. Mad saturation. I was super um, conscious of my sections because I want them to be about the same width. So that's looking pretty good. I'm feeling myself. I am gonna go ahead with my other mesh sheet and I'm gonna go right on top just to let that process in whatever way that it wants. Um, does anybody have any other questions? Talk to me. Hair talk. Do you guys wanna see anything else? What do we got going on? How are we on time? We're, we're fine on time. How about if you were gonna work this into uh, a whole head application, uh, using the meshes like we spoke about earlier. Could you just show us a small portion of that so they can see Definitely. it? Definitely. So you. like, yeah, my, my honest goal was to really bring this all the way around. So what I would do in this case is knowing that this section is here and what I love about this kind of application, I've seen a lot of amazing techniques where they'll come in and do like a mohawk or do these like diagonal back sections and the way that they paint it, once the hair falls horizontally, it like creates this beautiful diagonal. And I've seen a lot of that by like James Marsters and um, like that Josh does hair. There's some really awesome vivid artists that do that. I'm very, very visual. So I like a horizontal application. See, because I applied this in this way, now I can very visually see how I'm gonna want to apply this in the bulk of the hair. So I don't really care about what's underneath. I'm really just gonna stick with 
really just almost the end of her eyebrow. And I'm gonna take this section. We're gonna get this out of the way. So that everything's secure. Now, this is the part that I call hair math. So let me see here. If I were to let this section down, this is exactly my thought process when I'm doing a creative color like this. So y'all get to see it here. So if I lift this section up and I look at this, okay, so where are we here? So it starts with the coral at this point. So I'm gonna come in, maybe we'll do less. Because I know that all I really care about for a shine line is the exterior of the hair. Unless I'm going in and doing some crazy updo later, which with a shagged mullet, that's not really an option. So I really just want to get the surface. So I'm really, I'm breaking my section. At first I started at the end of the brow and now I'm, I'm coming way up because I see that that's not going to do me any good to start way down there. Work smarter, not harder. You don't have to do the whole thing. So now I'm going to look at this section and let's see here. At least now we've got some of the clear that's going to go right here and then I'll get started in my, um, my coral. Now I'm also going to establish when I'm working in a section like this, I want to work off the flat surface of her hair. This back here, right back behind the ear is where she really starts to curve and you're going to lose that very straight line at that point. Again, hair math. I always look at the head and think about it a lot deeper than just slapping a horizontal line here. So I'm working in my very flat area. And I'm going to work at the very top of the section. That's where I'm going to start my shine line. I'm going to come in with my mesh sheet. Let me grab one. And since we're starting with clear on the scalp, if I can, I like to get in there without anything underneath it and touch down first with my product. Why? Because I feel like it just secures my section. It lets me get one last visual with any mesh or foil or anything between me and the canvas that I'm working on. So I'm just getting right in, creating that line, and now I'm gonna go in. It also creates some nice glue to hold my mesh sheet down. I'm just gonna set it right in there, whoops, and pull that bad boy down. Come back in secure and now I can visually see that my line is matched perfectly with the bang and now I'm gonna go right in I'm gonna hold this is way easier to work on than those feathery layered bangs because it's just flat hair unlayered let me come closer I feel too far I miss you guys there, that should be better so and actually this is even a little, little too messy. We, we want to make sure that our section is spread out. I want to apply this on the hair the way that it lives. Oops, my mesh slid down a little. Cool. Now I'm going to come in. And add my line. Earth. Got a little bit down here. We're not mad. We're not scared. It's literally just conditioner. And next we're going to do the purple. As we're rolling this through everybody, this can become a color theory class if you want. If you have any questions, it can become a vivids class if you have any questions. It can okay. really become whatever kind of class you want um, as long as it's hair. Yeah, or color correction. I love talking color correction and getting really technical about color. You guys can ask me anything. I'm an open book. Now, I only want to take this blue down to the same area that I took the blue on the bang. This section is longer than my bang was, so the very ends are still going to be clear. So I'm actually going in with my clear right now to lock that in because I, I only want this line 
to dance around her head at the same level all the way around like a, like a little halo. Beyonce cues in the background. I won't sing today. You're welcome. So see how I'm, I'm locking my little ends down because I don't want these to get saturated with anything. I want to, I want to really make a, make a pop here, make a statement. <laughs> I see people laughing. That's we good. Are, we, uh, so when we use the word vivid, uh, when, when you use the word vivids, what do you mean? So when I'm talking about a vivid, I'm normally talking about a direct pigment, which would be a semi or a demi permanent color. They normally come directly like out of the tube, like a Pravana, Pulp Riot, um, Goldwell, Illumin, Swarzkopf. I mean, everybody's got their, um, their direct dye, their direct pigment. Um, so I'm, that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a vivid. It's a vivid hair color. Normally that is, you're not mixing with a peroxide. It's not oxidizing in any way. Although there are now vivids that you can use, you know, mix and make a permanent color. That's not what I'm talking about. Are so, those really brighter colors? More of like your traditional blues, traditional purples and reds instead of like a level seven red or a level nine yes. red? Yes, like you're not going to get like a 7N in a direct dye. You're just not because you need that ammonia in order to lift and deposit the hair to create that level. Usually when you are working with vivid pigments, it's not so much about what level you're going to achieve by applying the color. It's more what level you pre-lighten the hair to prior to applying that vivid. So the difference between like a permanent vivid color would be that the permanent vivid with that peroxide is going to give you some of that lift and deposit. So you want to, you know, formulate that a little, whereas with vivids, you are creating your level of lightness using lightener first and then going back in and doing your deposit. I hope that wasn't too wordy. I love hair. I love Not, at all. Not at all. Don't worry about it. It's a great answer. So this is what I'm going to do. Um, I actually do have 8 million mesh, mesh sheets, but they're in the other room and I don't want to have to fly over there. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take my mesh. It's about still half the sheet left and I'm actually going to take it and I'm going to fold it up with my section and I'm only going to go up to where my little clear line is because I want to leave my base out. I always like to leave my base out so that I know where I am. See, I left that little guy out and I only brought the end of the mesh sheet when I folded it up, up to where my color is or well, really my first color. Cool. And now, I'm going to pull down another little thin section, being conscious of where the head curves. See all this back here? That's the head curving. I don't want to get lost in that. You don't want to get lost in that sauce. Get that out of here. And again, starting with my clear, solidifying this section, keeping the control. Could you substitute foils for the mesh sheets? You could, but I don't recommend it because every opportunity that we get as a colorist or a hairstylist, every opportunity that we get to be more sustainable or to, you know, have less waste at the end of the day, you should be using, using mesh sheets. Every colorist should be using mesh sheets. And also, and that's something I'm very, very passionate about. So if ever you join me in any kind of education, I will always slip that in there because it's just so close to my heart. Um, but aside from that, foils are way more difficult because I can't see what's inside of that foil. I would have to come forward, pop the top of that foil every time just to like see where I'm at. Because again, I am so visual. Like that's why I'm making my whole application horizontal so that I can physically see what's going where and how I'm doing what. And that foil definitely takes away from like me being in complete control every part of the service. Everybody, you guys get yourself some mesh sheets. My next class that I teach, I would love for it to be like a mesh sheet lightning class or something. That would be awesome. But I'm so passionate about that. So since I went in and I locked the bottom down and the base first, that makes this so much easier. There's a lot less product getting everywhere. And I'm really liking how this is going. I'm picking up what we're putting down. 
and now I did get a little bit thicker on the sides. I get excited sometimes. So I'm, I'm wanting to make this really pop. If you have some color left after this section, would you just demonstrate real quick uh, how you might do a, a, a peekaboo section with this technique? Yeah. Yep. I actually went back and forth and back and forth. Every time I do something like planned like this, I'm so OCD, but I was considering um, carrying this forward and doing like these diagonal forward and kind of having the whole front fall forward. So maybe we will, let me see how I can make that fit with what we have here. And now when I do my next section, I'll actually pull that up and fold this. But for now, do we want to stay on this side? Maybe. Also, look at how fun these mesh sheets are. You can just like, they're soft. They don't make that crunchy noise. You can just kind of fold them and move them out of the client's way. If, if this was a client, oops, I just put my finger in the glue. If this was my client and I was working up front like this, I could just take this soft little mesh sheet and I could just fold it back and pull it out of her way. It's just super easy. Okay, so if we were gonna do like diagonal, this is totally going to, I normally would not, because I'm going in and I'm being so strategic about the horizontal lines that I would not go in and go vertical, but we will today. So what I would do, let me see if I can, and this actually might be really cool. So I'm excited to try this with the horizontal. So I'm going to create, I hate this girl's hairline. It's so not like a normal person's hairline, but that's okay. Because normally you're going to get a lot more of that that angle. I don't know. So her front section is going to be chunky. So what I would do, and because her hair, you can see in the section, it's just so darn thick. So I'm actually going to have to break this down into two sections. Super important, you guys. Saturation is everything. You want to be able got to be able to see through, see through that section that you're working with. And again, with my little mesh sheet, my meshy mesh. Now, I am going to, again, write out the lines that I see in the bang. So I'm pulling this forward, and I see that the coral really stops right here. So she gets coral right at the root. Do you, guys under, do you guys see what I mean, why I do that? Because I want it to kind of almost, I still want it to dance around her head. I want it to be intentional. I don't want to just pull down a section and say, oh, I, I'm just going to start it with blue because I think that'll look good. You want to make sure that you're intentional. So, same thing. A diagonal back section, but I'm pulling it forward. Actually, I'm going to make sure it's in there and then square it off. And see how I'm, I'm holding the section with serious tension. I'm in major control. That's huge, especially when you're doing these horizontal applications. What would you do if you accidentally ran one of your colors into um, another? How could you fix that mistake or however one would say that properly in English? So in English. <laughs> um, so actually, I just got some blue. It happens every section, every time. There's like nothing you can do. I don't know. If, can you guys see this little, this little boop? And what I do is I'm obviously not going to push it back into it. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm just going to take that and I'm getting that color off. You gotta be tedious sometimes. Sometimes you gotta 
really get in there and do the work in order to create that look. Nobody said it was going to be way easy. It's so it, ha it happens all the time though, you guys. And really just let it, you don't have to freak out. Just grab those little pieces, try to clean it up a bit. And I promise you it, you, you will see your shine line. It's not going to ruin it. And in something like this too, I don't want to speak out of turn, but my experience with this is unless it's a huge, huge mistake, no one will ever notice. Exactly. Seriously. And as artists, I don't know about you guys, but we're all like birds of a feather. And as an artist, I will see things in my work and I'll just stare at it and stare at it and be like, Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And people are just like, that is perfect. It's beautiful. I can't see what you see. So it's like so easy as an artist to just get caught up in absolute perfection. And it's like, that's not even a real thing that was made up. Perfection is not real. So I'm going to pull down my next section. And another thing, as you can see, I'm kind of moving this around. Now I want to keep this section with the same elevation that I had. Now it's kind of almost like a haircut where we're talking now about elevation. So I'm taking this chunk and I want that to go right with this. Now this corner right here, this is different. If I pull that down there, then it's over directed and it's going to create um, a little bit of like a triangle in my application. I don't want that. I want this to really flow almost like, now at this point, since I've gone in vertically, I want this to like look like a halo and I think that'll be awesome. So in order to do that, let me see if I can, can you guys see? Okay, I'm gonna take this, this little guy right here and pull her straight out where she lives so that I'm filling in that corner. Y'all see what I'm talking about or do I just look crazy? No, you're good. I love it. Crazy, but good. I love it that you guys can always expect that from me. Very cool. Getting in there, locking that, locking it all in. And this is how I would do that. And again, see, we got some of this on here. It's just these top hairs and it happens all the time. Just pull it out. That's a beautiful thing also about working with these conditioners is if you pull it right off, it's like, it's like it never happened. It's the craziest thing. It's like, it's like an eraser. With hair color. I do find though, you get the most control if you just paint backwards. The craziest concept I know. So for anybody who came in late, we're with Jessica Phillips of uh, at Jessica Phillips underscore hair on Instagram. We started off with a shine line in the doing a, a vivid application with a shine line in the bang. And then we had some people asking questions. So we moved on to how we would do that on a whole head application. And then now we're demonstrating on a peekaboo. So we kind of jumped around a little. No worries. So I even wanted to show you guys since whatever. Now, even if you really got in there and really got like chunks of the blue or any of your colors down where you want it to be clear, I'm just going to take one of these color, uh, one of these, um, these are non bleachable black towels. I get them at Sally beauty supply and I'm just going to go right in. And I'm not going to grab the sections that I got color on and obviously blend it into the others. I'm going to isolate it, take that one small little section and remove the blue where I don't want to see it. This happens all the time. It's totally chill. So cool. That looks much better to me. Now I'm going to go in, lock this clear down. Great stuff, Jessica. Um, everybody, we're we're bringing we're wrapping this down. Uh, we're we're closing this down, and as we're coming to an end, if anybody has any questions, now's the time. As we're rolling through, ask away, friends. 
I'm gonna put another mesh over here to kind of cover that up. We'll let this one down. So we've done a fringe, we did horizontal on the side. We learned that we're always gonna work on the flat section when we're trying to do tedious work. Be conscious of the curve. And um, we also did a nice little vertical slice, shine line. Add me on the gram. I will post this after so that everybody can see. Yes, if, if if you uh, I'll, if you could send me maybe some pictures of this, and then um, I I'm going to up do a small video from this tonight on our uh, on our IG page, and then I'll post the after pictures as well. That'd be great. Awesome. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm going to um, I'll finish this application, and you guys enjoy your day. One more question. Sure. Your experience with the semi-permanent conditioners, about how long do they typically last in there? So that is such a loaded question because it depends on so many variables like the shampoo and conditioner that they're using, how regularly they're shampooing um, when it comes to one of your clients. So, um, and it also varies in each color. Um, so the highly pigmented colors like a blue or a green or a deep violet, you'll find that those last for a much longer time, even up to two, three months sometimes. Whereas when you're working with diluted colors, um, these might go in as, you know, as fast as a couple weeks to a month. So again, there's so many variables. It also depends on the porosity of the hair that you're working on. Um, there's just so much to it. Um, but do be conscious. And when I'm doing a vivid application on a client, especially somebody who's never had one, I like to let them know if they choose like a really soft rose gold tone, I'm gonna let them know this might be gone in two weeks. So if you let me add a few dabs of the deeper magenta today, it's gonna give you longevity. So I, I hope that that answers the question and you know gets your brain moving on how you're going to approach vivids moving forward. Yeah, that's beautiful. My experience is is the, the exact same. You know, if they wash every day, some colors may last a week. <laughs> you know, so just keep right. that in mind. Um, also, we had another question pop up. Since these are uh, dilute diluted, in your experience, does the color come out different than what you're seeing as you're applying it, or is it a matte finish? Um, now, since I did dilute it and its conditioners, it is going to be. It will be a little diluted. Um, but not too crazy. You're still going to be able to see quite a bit of a punch. So Beautiful. And then I'll answer the last question, which is, yes, this video will be, uh, this, we will put this on our video 